here's how you can make $10,000 in the next 30 days. So the first step is you gotta learn how to go find an ugly house like this that's off market. What do I mean by off market? Off market is property that's not on the MLS. Nobody knows about it. That's off market. Those are the best type of deal because if it's on the MLS, even if it's ugly house like this on MLS, you gotta get a lot of investors that are all gonna bid against it, it's gonna drive the price up. So you ever wanna find a good deal, you gotta go find ugly house and you gotta go find them off market, not on MLS, okay? The question is, how do you find them off market, That I use a software called PropStream and you pull up, let's say in this area, and I want all the ugly houses and you put in criteria like the home is, you know, 50 years and older and you know what I mean? Maybe probably close to free and clear. It's a rental property, right? These are some of the criteria you can pick when you go to the software you can see it then what happens they give you a whole list of home like this then the second software you use called deal machine it's a drive for dollar app you take this list and you upload it into deal machine and what you do you drive the list first you drive it when you get in front of the house you go oh my god it's an ugly house and what you do is you drop a flyer there you make a note and when you get all the property you realize oh those are ugly house ugly house ugly house then you take that list and then you will use that same service and you skip trace it skip tracing means you put in this software it tell you who the owner is the contact the number the email so you can leave a flyer there or you can mail them a letter you can call them you can do all that get a hold of them when you find the property you get their contact now you got a whole list of property with their contact the name and you know which one's ugly two you gotta know what to say once you find this deal you gotta know what to say to the owner the key about knowing what to say you gotta have script you gotta have a script that's calling a seller who lives in the house called owner occupy you also gotta have a different script on calling an owner who has a rental property Property. We call it Aptee's property. So they're two different scripts. Now, when you have the script and you know what to say, you gotta make a conversation though, and you gotta make sure that in those conversations, you build rapport. The best way to build rapport is repeat what they say and acknowledge it. They're gonna feel heard, and they're gonna feel like you're in rapport with them, and they're gonna answer all your questions. Now, when you do all that right, the key is I want you to make sure you take away. You gotta know why are they selling? When are they selling? How much do they want for their property? What do they owe on their property? And if they got the price they want, are they ready to sell now? You gotta get that. That is the motivation. You gotta get their motivation and you gotta get those answer. You got it? That's how you do a great job on probing the owner to get the information you need. Once the information they give you, that's how you know if they're a real motivated seller or they're not motivated. The third thing you need to know how to do is learn how to evaluate a deal. So there's three components that you need to know how to devalue a deal to know it's a deal or no deal. The first one is, what is the price that the owner want to see if it's actually a good deal or no good deal you got to know the price up front number two you got to know what it costs to rehab the property number three then you got to know what the arv is and it stands for after repair value what is this property worth after it's all done sometimes you might not get the answer from the owner on what the property is worth but the key is you want to ask them what they want if they tell you what they want and you know what it costs to rehab a home like what you're gonna see here, and what the ARV is, then you can run it and you evaluate. Once you evaluate and you know what type of margin you have. In my standard, in my world, what I teach a lot of my students, after you buy the property and repair the property and what the home is worth, we want the purchase price and the rehab together to be at least 70% of the ARV. So let's say purchase price of rehab is 700,000 and the ARV is a million. That means you have 30% margin. To me, a keeper, what I call a burr, is 30% margin. A flip, it's about 20, 25% margin. And then a wholesale deal is somewhere between 10 and 15% margin. And then anything less than 10% margin, if you're a realtor, you can list it. If you're not, it's a dead deal. That's how you know what type of basically deal you got in your hand when you find it. But you need to know purchase price rehab and ARV to determine deal or no deal. All right, and then the last step is learn how to negotiate the contract and assign that contract to another investor with money. So let me explain. After you find out the owner wanna sell the property, then you negotiate with the owner with the right price. Once the right price is all established, then you get a contract and you write thatch win on purchase and or assign. You want it on the, on the place where you put your name, thatch win and or assign. And what that does is it allows you to assign this contract. Then you write down the price. Let's say this property here, let's call it 350,000. Okay, that's how much you got on the contract for. And then you put down inspection time so that you and the investor who want to buy the property have time to inspect the property. I like to actually put at least five days probably 10 days now sometimes you're not gonna have those kind of time but that's why you do off market if you do off market no one's competing against you then you have time you can put five up to ten days but when it's on the MLS with everybody's at it 
you don't have inspection time, you gotta buy with no inspection, which is a no-no. Again, that's why you do off-market. So you do inspection five to 10 days, closing ideally 30 days after waiver of inspection. Earnest money, typically you put down, let's say 2% of the purchase price. Let's say 2% of 350, five to $7,000. You want to put on the addendum earnest money not to be deposited in waiver of inspection so you don't have to put the earnest money up here until you waive the inspection now you have a full contract you got 10 five to ten days to go and go tell someone so let's say now the contract is signed now what i'm gonna do i'm gonna call my investor i'm gonna say hey man i got this deal do you want to buy this and tell them it's for 360 that ten thousand dollars for you they're gonna run their number 360 plus the rehab and the ARV, they're gonna go, oh, this makes sense. So in that five to 10 days, they're gonna go out and look at the property after they negotiate with you and they're good with that, they're gonna go inspect it. If it's good, then they'll go fine. They're gonna go ahead and move forward and they're gonna close 30 days later. Then when they close, then they're gonna cut you a check for $10,000 after closing. And that's what we basically, that's your fee. That's a $10,000 we call assignment fee. You can find one of these houses like this every month. You can do over $100,000 a year in just wholesale. You don't need no money. You don't need no credit to wholesale. All you need is know how to find an ugly house, know what to say, know how to evaluate, know how to put in the contract, and you gotta have hunger, motivation, and consistency. You do that consistently, you can make good money. All right, so what I just explained basically is the wholesale process. So when you hear people say, you can invest in real estate with no money, no credit, this is what they mean, wholesaling, okay? If you gotta like the video, give us a thumbs up, comment in the video, and subscribe to the video, and make sure you turn on your notification bell until the next video drop, okay? Peace.